This episode of the Slightly Serious Sign Podcast is sponsored by Terrible Wine. Terrible Wine, the wine that's so bad we can't even give it an American name. Terrible Wine, cost over quality. Now available at your local dollar store in a box, not a bottle because the bottle's too expensive. Welcome to the Slightly Serious Sign Podcast, episode 40. Did I say it right? A podcast. podcast? It's actually a podcast. Episode 40. That's right. We don't really have a sponsor for this one. We're just kind of winging it. We have Domingo here. And the reason he can put the camera over, Tyler's not in here, is we're ready to start. We've been thinking about this all day. And dude had to get up and go to the bathroom. So we're like, we're starting without you. So he'll he'll be in here shortly. And then we'll start talking about, we're going to talk about the SEMA show. We're going to talk about NESSD. Uh, we're going to talk about um, rappers out in the industry. And then whatever else we happen to come across, Rick's still playing with all the cameras, but we're on a roll. Domingo, welcome you, back. Uh, it's good to be back. Good to be back. So how was your trip over there? I heard uh, you uh, had some excitement over there. I heard you had a little tasting contest over there. Yeah. I heard so, you uh, came back with a, a little bit of coin. Yep. Um, I guess we should clarify. Where did you go? Right. Okay. So I started my trip 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days ago now. I left for SEMA. Um, the first day's rough. You normally I go in a day early. SEMA starts on a Tuesday, I think. And uh, I left here on Tuesday morning, like 4 a.m. So you get there. By the time I get there, you get to the hotel. You got a day of travel. But the Avery Customer Appreciation event is Tuesday night. So that starts at like 6 o'clock, which is what, 9 o'clock here? Yep, so we're on, we're on Eastern time, better known as American time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're on American time here. They're on, what is it? West coast time. West, what coast, they call time. It? West coast time. So you're three hours difference. Every party was pretty incredible. Um, they probably put a lot of money into that. Like it's, there's 500 people there. Oh, I was going to say how many people? Um, the funny part about that thing is they gave us these bracelets, these light up bracelets. I wish I had it here. Um, I don't think they bought the adult ones. Because I could not get mine <laughs> get on. on. I could not clip my bracelet on. We had people trying to clip my bracelet ride. on. You had a kitty ride that you couldn't get on? Yeah, it's just basically like <laughs> they wouldn't, it would not fit. No matter what I tried, it would not fit. And other people are just sliding them on, and I'm kind of looking at the, some of the guys that are just sliding them on. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I could not. The bracelet. Oh, the bra hey, hey welcome, start Tyler. Over? Hello, everybody. So we're on Tuesday of SEMA. So we do that event. That goes pretty late. By the time you get back to your hotel room, you've basically almost been up. Well, it's 20, you know, 20 hours. It's 20 hours. Yeah, it's 20 hours always when you go to Vegas. And then... Or West Coast. Um, that wasn't the night the alarm went off here, um, but that was uh, Jaime, HR, calls me, hey, I need to talk to you at 8 o'clock, which is what, 5 o'clock? Yeah. I mean, I'm already running a 20-hour day. I've only slept for a few hours, and he calls <laughs> and he calls me. I'm like, dude, do you know where I'm at? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. I got I to gotta talk about this. It's something I could have talked about later. So, Jaime, knock it off. <laughs> But he did the next day too. So I didn't learn. He did. And I don't expect everybody to learn the whole time, but like, yeah, just about every day, because people used to call me anyways, just about every day, someone called me by what was five o'clock our time, just about every single day. And there was one day, I think they called me like two. So it was five here. <laughs> so, but it happened. So then Wednesday is just, just basically the show. And then there's some after parties. It's, it's more, I want to be, I want to know. If there's anybody new coming along. So SEMA is getting known in, the, in our rap industry for um, contest, rap contest. And we can talk a little bit about this. I don't like them. Because I, I, if you're doing it for fun, that's great. If you're doing it to see who the best is, no. You're doing, I, think, I think some of them are doing it wrong. Because... A lot of it's built on speed. A lot of them have different right. things. I mean, I watched Charlie from Avery, who's an incredible rapper, absolutely bomb a contest. Well, it's because how it's graded. Like, and he used to be really good at where he'd check all oh, this, how you graded. He just ran over there and tried to do it. And it's like, he was doing it great. But like, it was more on time than it was on quality. Um, when, and we, I think we've talked about this and I'll talk about it right now. Like, I would love to see who the best actually is. Yeah. And, and what I think it's going to take is a big number. Like if we, we have to give 50,000 to the winner, 100,000 to the winner and literally get everybody out. But you also have to do it where it's not a cutesy contest. It is simply like real life stuff. Like, can you wrap? And I think even a car. Okay. So you're going to wrap the side of a car. If any part of it's going to fail, like the judges look through any part of it's going to fail, throw all the points out. You, you lose. Cause that's a return. Like you should automatically lose. And then maybe, so maybe you do like, Hey, if it's, it's supposed to take 45 minutes, 
okay, it's worth 90 points minus how much time you took. But if anything's going to fail, throw it out. Like, and just do it, just do it across the board and let's find out who the best is. Yeah. Let's and bring everybody out. And don't do any of like the gimmicky ones that they do now, which like is fine for like that kind of stuff. Like for raps, kind of, I think those contests are like cool when they're doing these super random ones, but the people that win are people that have done those contests before, right? They already know, like they're bringing one do about a specific tool just to do that one yeah. test, which is not like a real test. Yeah. You're at home practicing wrapping a bowling ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Nonsense. laughs> exactly. I mean, there's, there's point to winning a contest, but then yeah. there's a point to like, I want to know who the best is. Yeah. I truly want to know like, okay, let's, let's narrow it down. Is it, is it the legacy guys? Is it Jim Miller? Is it Dallas Fowler? Is it Chad Parrish? Is it John Duver? Yeah. Or is it one of these new guys? Yeah. Like who is the actual best? Yeah. And I think it's more practical stuff than it is these ridiculous stuff, right? Let's get in like like let's get in a line nine eleven front bumper, dude. Not fun, right? Lots of cuts, but it's a good test, right? Can you figure it out and do it? Let's bring in, yeah. Let's bring in real life cars, line them up. Yeah, yeah. let's, let's put bring, in, let's put a big number up so everybody comes. Not like okay, they win the contest, they got to bring home eight rolls of vinyl. Who cares, <laughs> man? Like, give them the cash to buy it yeah. later. Yeah. Like it's all the same money, right? Whether you give them the cash or you give them that, it's all the same money. Not like, really. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can inflate the roll thirty percent. They do 30, it. <laughs> whatever, whatever yeah. they mark it up forty, fifty percent. A way more it probably eighty <laughs> percent. <laughs> Street value on this is unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to see. I'd like to see someone put together a, a big contest with a big number and literally have everybody out. Literally, yeah. everybody that wants, everybody that thinks they're the best, come on out. Because I think you're going to find a lot of the. Um, I don't even say younger, the, the newer people are yeah. going to realize there's a different level that you never knew existed. Yeah. And I attribute it to like, even my, my younger years when I was crazy fast, everybody thought they were fast. Then you find someone that's like crazy fast. And then you're like, wait a minute, I wasn't fast. Yeah. No, you're still fast. There's just one guy that's like, yeah, they got this extra little boost. Yeah. Yeah. But you be, you bring up a good point. You know, you got to look at the vehicle and look at the wrap where it's going to fail as well as, you know, speed doesn't really if it's quality that you're looking for, right, to last longer, speed is not what you want. No, you want some speed because that's your labor. Right. But you can't you can't compromise um, quality for speed. Like the quality has to be there. Get faster, but still have that perfect quality. Like if it can be returned, that's why I said, if it can be returned, if the customer's going to look at it, like, no, I'm not going to take that or it's going to start flapping. Nope, you fail that test. Like you get zero points. Yeah. I mean, we just talked about this today. So like we just came back from the wrap class last week, realized like within the last hour that the way we're going to take the picture, we had wrapped the wrong side of, we had an Indy car that we were using for the class. We'd wrap the wrong side of the car for the picture. Can't turn it around. Right. I can't like move oh. the car. So we're like, all right, I need some hands on. We're going to get this thing done. Cause I'm going to take a picture of this thing in an hour and it's got to be done. And so we get some help in the front, some help in the back. Then we have the whole middle section that's just basically got to be done. So I was like, all right, let's do it. So I put a bunch of vinyl on this Indy car. It looks good when it's done, but it's not making it. It's not even going to make it to tomorrow, right? But for a test, you know, if that was for a contest, I would have pulled it off, dude. We were on there. It was smooth. It looked good, but it wasn't done properly, right? So like for a test sake, be like, yeah, I can do it, right? I can heat it and make it look like I've done what it needs to do. But in actual, it's not a good wrap. It's not a, I didn't do a good job. I did a picture worthy job. You know, it looks good from 25 feet away and when it's only going to be on there for 35 minutes until they rip it off. But yeah, they're going to say that's what they're doing in the contest, no right? Like if you're trying to do something complicated, you can heat the vinyl up enough and stretch it that it'll look good. Like it'll look done, but it's not, it's not going to hold, which like if you're going to go home and do that, is that actually a good skill to have? No, well, no. Same, I mean, we ran rash that, is not a good skill. Yeah. We ran that contest blindfold. You never can do one blindfold, but our test wasn't be like to find out who's the best. Ours was like, Hey, let's have fun. Yeah. Realize how much you actually do know. You know, and we only had what one sellable one. Probably the Dallas Fowler Jim Miller was the only sellable. Two. Maybe that other guy. What was the other guy's name? Do you remember? Oh, the Hoods. The you're hoods. talking. Yeah, Probably and uh, um, well, no. Uh, uh, why am I blanking out? The guy that did it first. Um, what world? I can't think of his name either. Um, but when we did the side of the Adam. door. Oh, that's right. oh Adam uh, Subner. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, he did it first. Just he actually set our time for it. We yep, didn't even have right. a guest time. He came and did it by himself, and that's the time we used for the whole show. He did a great job, obviously. Uh, Jim Miller, that was unbelievable. That was ridiculous. Um, and then yeah, the one other one, uh, I can't remember those guys' names. Are, but yeah, well, those guys, thing. those guys are out there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. They know what they're doing. They know it. Oh, they knew it. Yeah. I mean, they knew what they're doing. And yeah. and the good rappers and, and Chad's one of them too. Like they, they look at the car. They're almost like scan it in their brain where I'm like, I have to lift the vinyl up 18 times to figure out what the heck's underneath there. Yeah. And they like, they scan it, it yeah. and see it like, and it's just in there. And that's what makes a good, good rapper is like, they've already have that scanned in their brain. They yeah. know where those little dips are. They know where they got to go. And it's like, not me. Like, I can't remember where the light was. I cut it short <laughs> 90% of the time. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That for sure. So I'm thinking, oh, the light's right here. And then you can see the whole blue of the car. Like, oh yeah. Knife might touch the car too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, yeah, I think the problem is with that, you, you also need to do it in a setting where everyone's already going to be there, right? So you're going to have to tie it to a show of some sort. And then the problem with that is the space to do that kind of contest is just going to yeah. be insane, right? Yeah. I mean, Unless it depends you have, how many people you have, like you may have to do to, to make it a two qualify. or three days. No, you may have to have 15 transit vans yeah. all lined up and we're going to do 30 teams at a time or 30 people. And I also thought like, okay, you do it individual, but like when you get like the side of a van, you can get one person to help you, but you got to trust that person. Yeah. And then we'll also know who the best is because the, everybody will be picking that person. Yeah. Because obviously you should give that person some of your payout. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be we'll, hard, to, it'd it'd be be hard to do it right um, and at a big enough scale because it's the same thing. If you put a big enough prize out there, right, you're going to have so many teams that want to compete. And that's the plan. And if you do a long contest, right, that's like, hey, we're going to do this very specific thing and they take, you know, an hour or two, you only have eight hours of showtime a day, right? So you're going to have to figure out could a way you, to... Could you do like qualifying rounds? We could do qualifying rounds. Sort of like other, uh, other Texas other Hold'em, you know, you or yeah, the game and weed them out. Weed them out. Yeah. Or you figure it out how many teams we got. Oh, we got, we got 150 teams. Can we get 75 vans in one place? <laughs> do 75 at a time, but that's, that's a lot of judging too. 100%. Yeah. And who judges? That's a good question too. And how? Yeah. yeah. What are I the mean, we talked about it like with, uh, like we do the demonstration on the transit vans where somebody will heat and heat the corner and, you know, like they're doing the channel, they'll mash it down. We'll show you where if you come and you cut that right where they mashed in the corner and then you heat that up, if it's overstretched, it will literally like start expanding on itself. So you'll be able to see the pain underneath. If you did it right and you cut it and heat it, it will just stay in place. It won't move. Yeah. You, gotta, so, you almost got to get manufacturers like, like Rich, you would be a good judge. Yeah. Maybe you gotta do that. Um, you need people that have been there, a, and then you. All, a long I think time. you also do it where, like, okay, you here's here's all the prints. Pick which brand you want to use. Then we're gonna find out what brand everybody wants to use. <laughs> They're like, not gonna be happy about it. <laughs> it's hey, it's cutthroat. Like you're gonna find yeah. out who the best is. You're gonna find out what brands use the most. And, yeah. And you better start selling your brand if we end up putting this all together. Yeah. When you look and there's 10 rolls of the same material sitting at the end, nobody used it. Yeah. <laughs> when nobody used one brand. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> you'll know that's a problem. <laughs> but yeah, how would you do it? I think that's, the, that would be the key too, is to get like the first step being a relatively short one, right? So it'd be like a 30 minute or so test and you have everyone do it and then weed them down from there real fast. Yep. Uh, I think it could be done, especially if it was easy enough that everyone should be able to do it without like having one fluke and messing it all up, but difficult enough that you'd weed out the, the lower end of people. Yeah, that would be sweet. And there'd be some people that'll be, I don't know if you put color change in it. There's some people that are really, really good at color change that don't ever play with, you know, print. Whatever, two layer vinyl, print yeah. vinyl, two layer vinyl. So you'd have to figure out whether you have two contests or you have one. We well, yeah. definitely don't want to do window tint because I saw one. I think I showed you that photo or <laughs> the wrong side. <laughs> Literally, there's a car with window tint on the back window, but it's peeling off the back window. <laughs> outside. Outside. <laughs> I'm like, outside? Are you saying yes? That's a, I'm like, is that a YouTube? DIY, <laughs> DIY YouTube version. <laughs> hey, it's just falling off the listen, back window. There's, there could be another ask, explanation. It could be a bigger guy. They yeah. just simply couldn't reach the back. He's like, I figured <laughs> yeah. out one way or another. I can't reach the back corner yeah, of the window. Yeah. I don't know how they do it sometimes, to be honest with you. But I can't do it. I, I cramp so bad when I'm trying to reach in there. I don't know how you would do yeah. it. Even some of the windshields some of those, now. Yeah. Like even if you're trying to do like a Cybertruck window, you know how far down that thing goes? It's like a full arm length down there to get that front of the windshield? It would be impossible. But yeah, it would be sweet. be sweet to do a big contest and weed them all down. Yep. Find You'd have to tie it somehow. I'll have to get... Yeah. Put your skills against somebody else. Let's, let's yeah. rock and roll. So rugs, if you're listening, there's our ideas. They're free yeah. with Wensco sponsorship. 
Yeah. Thank you. I Wait mean, a minute. Okay. Free sponsor. Listen. <laughs> listen. Yes, that's what I meant. But sorry. The reality is if you're going to get, say, 200 of the top rappers that think they're the top rappers into a building, you're going to get 3M, Avery, Orful, Arlon. Everybody. Um, to all the tool guys. You're going to get everybody. Rich, or uh, General Formulations. You're going to yeah. get everybody there. Yeah. So, like, if, if you get the people there, you'll get every vendor to be there, make, get booths, get whatever we got to do and, yeah. and print the vinyl or get it printed. Then you end up like, who's going to print what? Like, yeah. you have to print your own and, or bring your own prints. Or we get all the, what's those it printed on? Because you're going to want Echo Solvent. You're you going to want latex. Yeah, but you, you get Roland, everything. You get Roland Epson, Muto, Mamaki all there. Yep. All different films, all different printers. Yep. All different color H- changes. Sorry. So is, is, Arlon going to send their guy? Is Avery going to send their guy? If they want is, to. Okay. Everybody, all hands, like whoever you think is the best. Yeah. I mean, Avery's are all subcontracts. So Justin Pay going to participate? I would love to see it. Bring it. <laughs> Maybe he'll come and judge. <laughs> yeah. He's been around. He's, He's seen a lot. So Yeah, he may be, have to be the judge. Yeah. But I think it would be awesome. I think it would be sweet to do it. I think we do like... Like you said, I think most of it are like pretty gimmicky. Like Avery, I think just did the best one, just five hundred dollar Visa card. Pretty yeah, straightforward. We the, they, we, they announced our name a bunch of times. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard it went pretty smooth. Yep. But I think I mean that's like the best. It's like, hey, we're just going to give you five hundred bucks, like just straight up. That's easy. So if you scale that up, you can get everyone to come out for it. Oh, without a doubt. I think it. I think it could be something. Well, I'm glad we got all our ideas out of the way. Yep. Well. Starting to think of next right. year, you're going to see the Wensco Rap <laughs> Wensco <laughs> World Championship Rap Olympics or whatever. We can't call it the Rap Olympics. Yeah, we can't so call it Rap Olympics. Raps. Yes, I don't care if someone steals it. I just want to be there. Like the, the, literally, that's what I like at SEMA. How's it is walk around to the contest and see who's winning? Yeah, is there somebody new that's winning, or is it the same old people? Is it you know it's who's much, there? Seemed like it was pretty much the same old people. I, when I walked around the Avery event, I'm kind of looking around like it's. It's the same on, there's, there's five guys. Names. There's a few names here, there, and there's the same, you know, top few that don't show up. Um, but for the most part, it's a lot of the same people. Yeah. But that's probably because they invite the same people too. It's the Avery party. It's not 100%. like, you, yeah. know, you can just decide, hey, I'm going to go. Yeah. Like only us important people get yeah, to go. You're not going to see, you're not going to see all the trainers from the other no, you're not manufacturers. Gonna well, there. I mean, you do. I mean. Some of them. I'm trying to think who was, who was in there that I saw. I was like, what are you doing here? Um. But I've seen it before. Like I walked up to the bar that one time and George from Arlon was standing at the bar ordering a beer. <laughs> with an Arlon shirt on. With Arlon shirt on. <laughs> at, at the Avery party. At the Avery party. <laughs> they just let anyone it in. Just happens. You know? That's funny. Yeah, I think it would be sweet. We'll have to figure out how to pull it off. Make it happen. All right, so year. the wrap up Wensco, my... Wensco Automotive at our booth next year. Wensco at Automotive SEMA. Restyling at our booth how next are we year. Supposed to get in the, how are we supposed to get in the automotive section of the show, though? <laughs> They're going to put us all the way in the back. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing at the SEMA show. So I walk around and new vendors get stuck in a different hall. So if you've never been to the SEMA show, but you've been to Las Vegas Convention Center, it's every single hall and every single parking lot. And if you're new, you end up in North Hall and all the restylers were in the West Hall. Well, a lot of the stuff we saw was colored. Um, PPF. 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 And it was all over the place. Every Chinese factory in, in China was there, plus their relatives. Um, but I, so I walked the North hall just to see it all. And when I got done walking the North hall, someone said, Oh, did you see what Fowler's had? I'm like, what? They're like Fowler's in the North hall. I'm like, I just walked the North hall. Sure enough. I walked back. Sure enough. I walked right by their booth. <laughs> like, Oh, it must've been great advertising. I walked right by it and it was a big booth. It wasn't like it was a bad booth. It was just like, there's so much at that show. Like you're like, yeah, you're yeah, looking, 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 looking. And so I walked by that. I almost walked by the pod steamer guy. Lucky he yelled my name halfway down the aisle. Mike. I'm like, oh, oh. Walked right by him too. So, but the other thing that I noticed at the show, there's a ton of these like roof rack tents. How many people are actually camping on the top of their vehicle? Uh, there's quite know. a few. It's there's unbelievable. How many roof rack when tents? When I go the, camping, I see quite a few. Some people that just pull in and they just pull in camp. for the night. And just, yeah, how do you get air conditioning up there? What if it's hot? They probably got something. I some solar fan thing. of some sort. Have you seen the Ryobi one with the mister? Yes. You put like iced water in there and it's like a little air conditioner thing. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I ended up drenched in the morning. Oh, yeah. Bag. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah you, you didn't quite get it dialed in. It's yeah. just spraying <laughs> the water the whole time. <laughs> so, you just wait. This is a little puddle. 
<laughs> so I saw, yeah, I saw a lot of those. A lot of the, like, that's the new thing. A lot of tents. Um, I did see a remote control drifter car, which was pretty cool too. Like he's drifting around the track. It was, that was pretty cool. Um, but other than that, I'm not a car guy. So like I see these cars and these big trucks and let's say, yeah. I did see the other funny part I saw was, uh, the, they had a war truck. It was basically a Ram and they, and they flipped the M upside down. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and then moved the A and R. So it was, it said war, but you could obviously see that the. It was a M was upside down. Yeah. It was pretty cool though. But the, yeah, sweet. there's all these big trucks, these these, you know, fancy cars and and I don't know cars, so like I can tell you what the Corvette looks like. But yeah. other than that, no idea. He he only recognizes Z06 because it says Z06 on the side. <laughs> yeah. Other easy. than that, like is it a Ferrari, is it a Lamborghini, is it a Porsche? Is it He's used to seeing like I know. SS supercharged yeah <laughs> yeah just yeah. well I, I do recognize the tesla trucks too if it says that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah if it says it yeah. that one must be an he's SS. looking for the SS. stp on the side <laughs> he's looking that's funny yeah but, so yeah there was a lot of cars there though there was we i mean i can't imagine trying to get the cars in and out of there like that one booth i think i sent you a picture had 10 tesla trucks in it yeah that's crazy and then they had another four outside they were all parked like one, two, three, yeah. four, which is yeah, but, crazy. Yeah, but you know, I, I've been going to Vegas for quite a while, for over 20 years. And when you say all the halls, I'm thinking in my head, that's a lot of space. That's a lot of walking. And they have, I didn't even go far because they used to put tents up around there, but they also use all the parking lots. There's booths in all the parking lots oh, too. Man. You can't park there either. And they use the, Vene- I think it's the Venetian. Who are they I don't know. What's the one right next to it? I don't know. The Apex. Wherever Apex is, there's another convention center that another part of the show's in because it doesn't all fit in one. It's crazy. It's a big show. Big show. So yeah, How many a, people did they say? Two million or something like that? Wow. Is that right? Or is it 200,000? Uh, I mean, it's probably two million. <laughs> could probably, be close. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it seems like as busy as can be. Like, you can't walk anywhere. Like, the whole show. Like, think of the busiest show we ever do as a science show. Times it by like 20, and that's how busy your halls are all the time. So in other words, if we were to all go, we would never see each other. Hopefully. Walk. <laughs> <laughs> I, but the p- thing is, I run into people nonstop that I know. Like, so you think, oh, this is huge. Like, I still run into people I know the entire time. Yeah. Okay. It's a small world, they say. All right, yeah. well. I only know like six people, too, and I saw all six of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're all there. They're, They're all, all there, there at the show, and they all found me at the show. They're all in the Feller's booth, actually. <laughs> 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 um, waiting for Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one school. Yeah. Why didn't they pull me in when I walked by? They didn't even said hi. Like I would have. They probably say don't trip know you. Back. I don't think I didn't. I, didn't, I walked in. I didn't recognize anybody. Yeah. The only fellers guy I recognized was the guy that saw, that always stands in the Moodle booth. Oh. I don't even know his name. Older guy with curly about. hair. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So. Well, they probably listen to the podcast still. So. Shout we, out. And we, yeah, shout Big out. Shout we thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Thanks for <laughs> listening. I, I got the thumbs up to if we do Christmas to do Frank Fellers again for Christmas. <laughs> From who? <laughs> From Phil. Oh, Phil Lafada. He said we can mention him again. Yeah. He thought it was funny. <laughs> he thought it was good enough publicity. <laughs> yeah, good enough publicity. Because <laughs> technically we weren't bashing them. Technically no. we we're bashing UPS. FedEx and UPS. Yeah, UPS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just it's mostly a problem with you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one else has that problem for some reason. Mm-mm. JDS does too. Oh yeah. Well, that makes sense. They ship. So that's funny. Um, so gambling went well until I talked to you kids. You guys screwed me over on the sports bets. On what sports bets? Well, the first night I said, Hey, what's the, what's the, what's the thing to bet? And Tristan told me two bets lost hundred bucks down the drain. Then the next night you said bet. Yeah, Anthony, I did. Anthony Davis. He, do you know how hard it is for me to find? They said, <laughs> "I okay." He, so he doesn't even know where to go. To be fair, I and I sent him a combo bet, so that made it even more confusing. It wasn't a parlay. Okay, I just sent him Anthony Davis over points and assists, so he was going to have to go and find where the little combo section was. Scroll down, and then not only did he not put that bet in, he put the reverse of the bet I told him to put in. He put in under points when I told him to put over on points and assists. And uh, he he lost. Mine won. I could see you not finding the sports book. And, <laughs> Listen, I found and the may, sports book. And maybe maybe betting on a horse. Going, to, I, I ended <laughs> up I'm betting on number five. <laughs> okay, he doesn't know. The first thing he had to do was okay, Anthony Davis. I'm thinking in my head. I think is that a football player? Or is that a <laughs> basketball player? <laughs> you know where to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what I mean. See, he's gonna go bet on a horse. See how much? Oh, the <laughs> horse's name Anthony Davis. There it, it was, is. It was funny as can be because I sent. I, he says, "All right, what's the bet for tonight?" And I just sent him the screenshot, and then Tate immediately responds with, "You think he's gonna be able to find that?" <laughs> Sure but, enough, he did not find it. Uh, I found me, it. Sir. I just bet it wrong. He Excuse just, me, sir. <laughs> sir, where can I place this <laughs> Anthony like, Davis bet? No, they got these. They he's have, asking the bartender, <laughs> I need to place this bet. Can you uh, do that for me? <laughs> no, they have these little like. Um, yeah, they got the little video, tablets Video on game there. type things. Yeah. Go to the video game, find it. But like, it's not easy to find. Yeah. Especially when you don't even know what sport you're looking for. Yeah, that's fair. You had to go through a couple different sports and find the individuals. And like, okay, must not play football. <laughs> Search, <laughs> but Anthony. I but the, that first bat was um, the the quarterback had a score, yeah, and he missed by a half a yard, yeah. That would have that would have put me another three hundred bucks up, but it I lost. Have. It was close. I yeah, lost. They actually thought he was in. That's even funnier. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they had Lamar Jackson anytime touchdown score, uh, but he had to. You know, they actually have to run it in. Yeah, and he got pushed out. He pushed. He literally leaned the ball forward too, and they got him at the half yard line. I was a half yard short of winning that bat. It's pretty crazy. I thought. Are you proud of me for watching the game, though? I was I surprised it. that you watched it at all. That I was, was surprised begin- you even. Knew. That was in the beginning of the game that I had to go to bed. It was past nine. I was surprised you even knew how to place the bet in the first place. Well, that it took me a while. Pretty incredible. Yeah, I'm not a big gambler. I just kind of wing it. It didn't work. I'm surprised you didn't get a phone call. <laughs> Ugh. I had, we had to send him the bets. He didn't <laughs> yeah. even know what to do. Yeah, I sent those guys, hey, what's the bet for tonight? And then you sent me that Andy Davis that lost. We were on a hot streak, too. So it's crazy. I'm still, he still lost both bets. He wasn't a very good listener. So anyways, okay, let's move on. From SEMA, myself, you have to go? myself and um, Brian Kanye, who uh, works for Metamark, we decided that a couple months ago, I said, he said, how are you getting to NASSD, which we'll talk about NASSD in a minute. I said, I'm going to drive because I want to drive through Death Valley. He said, oh, I'm with you. One, he didn't know what he was getting into. Like someone should have warned him. Doesn't know me well enough. So we rented a car and we go into Death Valley. Number one, if you go into Death Valley, get gas before you go in and maybe bring water, or some kind of snacks. And the other important part that I learned is bring a map. <laughs> because you get in Death Valley... You lose phone service. <laughs> there is no service. So if you don't have a map and you come to like a little T in the road, you have no idea where you're going. Flip a coin. So we actually stopped when we paid to like pay the fee to go in. I grabbed, there's a newspaper right there and I just happened to grab it because I'm waiting for him. I don't know if he's pooping, whatever he's doing. <laughs> it took him forever. <laughs> so I grabbed the map. I grabbed the newspaper and there happened to be a map in it. And then that's when I learned like Brian Kanye can't really read a map. <laughs> but... We finally, and Death Valley's cool, like, right? There's, but there was another time where we walked in and there's like a, a hike you can take and it says right in the thing, 1.7 miles. I'm in decent shape. Brian, hmm, I don't know. He's, a, he's in okay shape, but we had, we're in the desert, right? We have a half a water bottle and a little bag of sun chips. I said, Brian, I don't think we should take this hike. We're not really prepared. He's like, yeah, good idea. Went back to the car. <laughs> so by the time we got out of Death Valley, we figured our way out what, using the map. We needed the gas station ASAP. So we stopped at the gas station, and that, that gas station knows they have you, right? Like, yeah. it's five eighty five a gallon. So, Brian, you got to put gas in. You forgot to bring the map. <laughs> so, $200 later. So, so <laughs> for, for four gallons. <laughs> yeah. it, was 50, it was $50 a gallon. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Was the gas light on? It, well, gas light wasn't on, but we, okay. were, we were getting, you're getting, you're we, getting close. Yeah, we didn't want to go another... Look for another one. Okay. Like, we need a gas. So, at the same time, we stopped at this little rest area, and they had a 3D map of, like, Death Valley, like, the whole area. So, we're like, well, this says, like, up here, you, you might be able to get, because you're on the wrong side of the mountains for where you had to go. So, we had to go to California. We're on the wrong side of the Sierra Mountains, I think. So, we decide we're going to go up. There's mountains on both sides. We're going to go up this canyon. At some point, you should be able to turn left, go through the mountains, right? So, you get up. It's Yosemite. Okay, so we pull into Yosemite. Do you think we learned from our previous mistakes of like, hey, we're going to lose service and don't have a map? <laughs> no, we didn't learn. <laughs> we did the same thing again. <laughs> so we're in Yosemite. Gr- granted, Yosemite is easy. It's, it's one road, right? But when you get out and you still don't have service, now you can start turning. That's when it got a little dicey. <laughs> we ended up in some back road, redneck place, dark, winding down some mountain. And, and for me, 
we were just rally car racing. I kept yelling at him, like, you got to tell me when to turn. Like, we're flying here. And Brian's a little bit nervous because we have no cell service. It's dark. There's all kinds of signs that say, slow down. There's bears. And we weren't slowing down. And we're just flying through the mountains. But then we came out, and then we went, and we found our way out and got more gas and went to a hotel. So it all worked out. We lived. Barely, though. Barely. I don't think he'll trust me as much anymore. <laughs> He's good. He got his one road trip in. He's That's not right. going back. Yep. That's so, all he needed. But a bit of uh, excitement there. Yeah. And, no, Mike, I'm good. It's good to see you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. He so. didn't even ride with him the next day. <laughs> no. He rented another car. <laughs> I didn't know if he was going to show up in the morning, but he did. <laughs> um, but no, Yosemite's super nice. It looks a lot like the Rocky Mountains. It looks way like the Rocky Mountains, at least where I go in the Rocky Mountains, Like because I do that hiking trip in the Rocky Mountains all the time, so... At some point, I might have to go back to Yosemite, do some hiking, and go back to Death Valley and do some hiking. So, see any wild game anywhere? Uh, we saw some elk, some beer, but not a lot. Like when you're in Death Valley, you don't even see a bird. Like birds don't even live there. Like There's we kept saying, we're seeing there. nothing. Snakes? No snakes running across the road? No, a lot of people from another country there <laughs> wandering around. <laughs> well, at least they know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> they must have more fuel than we did. That's cr- it's it's so hot though. It just seems it wasn't insane. hot though. It was so it was cold. Like when we we're the whole time I was in Vegas and California, it never got over seventy the whole time. That's crazy. It was cold, cold for Vegas and cold for California it was cold here too. So so from there, the next morning we get up and we go to NASSD. So people that don't know NASSD is, I should know this. I was the president of it for a while. North National Associate North American. I don't know what it is. Sign Supply Distributors Association. It's something Sign Supply Distributors. So it's... Wait, isn't it right there? I, I can't read it from here. But oh, hold on. I can grab the It definitely thing. says hold it. On. <laughs> I can't read it. I've tried so hard. Does it say on the front? Yeah. National Association of Sign Supply Distributors right there here. There you go. NASSD. That means everybody that does, not everybody, but the important people that do what we do... <laughs> Why is it always the important people? Well, I, the pe- I mean, the, the people some- that build the company, you know, <laughs> work hard. No. Important people. I but just saw you cut. People. You can't even cut vinyl. I just saw you cutting <laughs> vinyl out there. <laughs> yeah, so, you sliced through the middle of my graphic. So, and so who cut this? Yeah. He's, yeah. The, he's holding the ruler and the blade in his hand. Yeah. Hey, I'm just, I just want it right. <laughs> Listen, because I saw right him now, make his first horrible. cut, Tyler. I was standing there when he made his first cut. Very first cut. Yep. Pushing across. Roll, ruler slides. He just keeps cutting right <laughs> through the graphic. Don't need, Says, to you know, don't need to because you know what? I got a quarter inch on each side that's yeah, going to cover good. it up. Ah. You're good. <laughs> so if you take the backlit cabinet class. Okay, let's get oh, back. I already have missed it. It'll be after this. Oh, let's get back yeah. to this. National Association of Science Supply Distributorship. That is um, people that, sign, that distribute to the sign industry. Us, uh, Grimco, Glantz, uh, GSG. I can name them all. JDS, Fowlers, uh, Reese, Montreux. Regional, mm, IT supplies. Um, we all meet once once a year, and so it's usually the owners are the most important people at the company, um, which that's me. A little bit of both, but more most important. It's questionable. Um, Can we put an asterisk on there? Meet with yeah. like usually it's <laughs> and usually it's the upper management of all the vendors too. So like we all get there's one on one meetings. You have to you basically. As a distributor, I think we, we might, I don't know if we always change it that way, but we can't say no. Like they can say no, but we can't say no. Um, so you meet with every vendor that's there, whether you do business with them or not, you still usually still meet with them. Like I meet with HP every year. We're probably not going to sell HP, but we still talk and chit chat every year. And you'd be amazed how good friends we all are. Like even us and Grimco and us and GSG, like way better than what you ever thought. Um, so anyways, we just meet and um, sometimes we drink some beer. Sometimes we drink some wine. We don't drink a lot of water. Um, we eat good food, and we and we do some events. Like the big event, like we always pick a nice place that has golf because it's it's uh it's like the good old boys club from back in the day where they always want to golf. Which I don't. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't like to golf. I mean, so I don't golf. But they started a few years ago. We started doing wine tasting, which is pretty fun. Like last year was a little bit rougher than this year. <laughs> So last year he we did wine. himself this year. He learned. Well, <laughs> what happened last year was your mom was there and she don't drink and wine. Two, and you had two drink fast. So every time they'd come through with the wine tasting, I'd have two. So by the you end of it, pretty fast. Woo-wee. So this year I paced myself and I only had a couple bottles. 
the first So night. this year they had a contest, and this was this this first actually night. was. This was pretty fun. So what, what they did was they gave you three different wines and you had to mix them. You had to make a mixture. So you had to make a mixture, create a label, and then um, create an ad. So you had to run a 30-second ad. So I'm sitting with a bunch of Canadians. Um, it's it's Guy and Crystal and then the KW Science guys and then Brian Kanye. He didn't really help. Brian, if you're watching this, he didn't really help. He just kind of <laughs> sat and laughed at us. And then I had Doug from uh, G2, G2G. <laughs> so Doug did a good job of keeping track of what we're doing. So first thing we're doing is we're mixing wine and Crystal started creating the label who was, did a great job. Our label looked sweet. But before we started, I said, okay, what do we want to do guys? Do we want to be serious or we want to treat this whole thing as a joke? They all look joke. Okay, let's do it. So Crystal starts creating the label. We decide we're going to call our wine. I can't say it like terrible. It's terrible in French because I have <laughs> French speaking people with me. So I'm like, oh, let's just call it terrible wine. Like, it's terrible, though. So we mix one, and then, you know, you, then you have to go up and do your ad. And there were some good ads, but everybody's like, oh, my wines, my grapes, my blah, 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 blah. Like, this, yeah. it's, it's yeah. real success. Make it really good. And, and we get up there, and I'm, like, introducing. I put the microphone over to Guy. Terrible, or whatever, however he says it. I'm like, the wine that's so bad, we couldn't even give it an American name. <laughs> And that's, that's how our ad started. And it went on to like, everybody cares about the grapes. Everybody cares about, you know, the love. Everybody cares about how it's made, the mixture. We don't care about any of that stuff. We only care about price. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to make, we don't even, I, I think at one point we said, we don't even, uh, we don't even know if there's grapes in our wine. <laughs> <laughs> so we go through the whole thing. And uh, at the end I said, you know, I go back to him. Tree Blake can now be fine at your local Dollar Tree in a box because the bottle's too expensive. <laughs> And, uh, and then at the end, I did put our plug in. I said, hey, get your free sample by subscribing to Slightly Serious Sign Podcast. <laughs> um, so you're but welcome. anyway. So, so welcome. If you heard yeah. our yeah. <laughs> wine ad. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to so the that, was our, that was our wine ad. And, and uh, we ended up winning the bottle of wine, which I didn't need. I mean, I probably should have gave it away to somebody else because we already had a couple in our room. And obviously, the three that we're mixing with, we finished those suckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm surprised. That wine terrible. <laughs> I'm surprised we had enough wine to actually finish our mixture because we were testing it so much. They gave you a whole bottle. It was only like this full when they got up there. Yeah. Well, so you start, you go up to the counter, they give you all their different, you can take different ones. Of course, I took a couple of them because you don't know which one you're going to like. Then you get back to your table and we're testing them. And then when we got done testing, I'm like, man, we got to finish these bottles. So we finished the bottles. But the food wasn't great there, but it was okay. But then you're in um, Monterey, 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 whatever it is. But it's... People, there's some richer people over there than we have over here in Michigan, for sure. If you're a rich guy, you live over there, not over here. So I know we had looked up one house. I think someone looked it up. It was like 950 square feet. It was like 4.2 million. Sheesh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we were in the Rav class. We were in Zionsville, which apparently is where all the professional athletes in Indiana. So the Colts, the Pacers, it's the Pacers, right? Um, I almost, I almost said the Indians. Which isn't even the Indians and also not Indiana. <laughs> Anyways, um, it was literally just like giant house after giant house after giant house. It's the craziest thing. But anyways, so, so you survived NASD. So I survived NASD uh, last night. You, had, you know, your president's dinner. I have to put my suit coat on. The one time of year I have to wear a suit coat. So I busted out of the closet. Well, but you the other part 12 is 12 days of Christmas last year too. So yeah, the other part is you have to pack for like 12 days. Like... How many people can actually have 12 pair of underwear, 12 pair of socks? And I need double the socks. I got to work out. I didn't work out every day, though. I must admit, there's a couple days where it didn't feel that great. <laughs> yeah, complete quitter. It's almost like he was dehydrated no, for I talked some to reason. Listen, yes. I don't know why. I talked to Jose and Nelson. They said, you need rest days. I said, okay, I'm going to take some rest days. Oh. You can't work out every day. They said, take some rest days. You know what they say about like uh, only take advice from people who look like you should take advice from them? You should take advice from people that look like they're already jacked. That's Jose's just, pretty jacked. Nelson, no. That's why I felt like Nelson's the one that told you. I didn't think Jose was going to be the one that told you. No, to Jose rest. told me. He's, he probably was at the gym still. Yeah. He has a, <laughs> Jose has a personal trainer. He's trying to catch Dang. me. So, Dang. That's sweet, though. But, but other than that, yeah. Any key takeaways from NASSD? Besides, um, one, there'll be more news else. coming about NASSD. Besides, no key takeaways. Besides Wednesday goes better than everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I just, they they all know that when we're there. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on, guys. What do you guys do? Nothing. 
So I think I'm the only one that works full time there. <laughs> you might have. You may no, have well, there's some guys that put in some time, but a lot of them are like uh, semi-retired. I, s- I did see some uh, sweet uh, outfits from the casino night though posted. There was so, so the, shout out shout out to Jared. He's the only one that posted any pictures. So that's how I was keeping up with what was going on. <laughs> yeah. So they put out like we did a casino night, and you want, they wanted you to dress up like Casino Royale or whatever. But they put the email out. I'm already at, I'm already heading to SEMA. <laughs> like, uh, that sounds about right. Why can't we have Beach Day? Yeah, you were ready. We for We should that have one. done Beach Day. I would have came in just my shorts. <laughs> just shorts. But that's why they didn't. (laughs) (laughs) We did find out, like, we talked to uh, Nick at Matra. I know he's listening. We figured him and Judy have the same work ethic. (laughs) They put about the same amount of time of work in. (laughs) They have to add it up together? If they add it all the way up, they'll have 40 hours on the year. (laughs) I knew where he was going. I immediately knew where he was going with it. Sorry, Nick. (laughs) Big shout out to Nick. We'll see you at the next show. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, it was, it was a decent time. I enjoy spending time with those guys and, you know, we stayed out We we close, we help close the bar every night. That was nice of you. Um, <laughs> well, I had to make sure those guys make money too, you know? Yeah, that's a good call. Um, Judy doesn't know this yet, but when she, when she listened to this, she did buy a round of drinks one night. So good job, Judy. When we got off the bus, I said, first round's on me. <laughs> so, and it was good job, Judy. So appreciate it. Way Judy. be a team player. Yep. It's really nice of you. But other than that, it was it was okay. Like pretty normal. It was pretty normal. Good. I mean, good food. You always have good food. Um, Judy asked for some. Apparently, she's aller- allergic to like melon or something like that. So she was telling the little guy that looked like Domingo. I thought it was seafood. Yeah, uh, it's whatever she wants or to shells. make up on that shells. day. Yeah, I just Selfish? say take it and see what yeah, happens. Shells. She says her throat might swell up and die, but we'll figure it out. It's pretty unlikely. Right? I mean, what's really is it really going to happen? Uh, but no, she asked for like she was telling the little guy that looked like Domingo that uh, she can't have melon. He comes with this big old bowl of fruit that's like this big, like four people couldn't eat it. I'm like, now you got to eat it, Judy. <laughs> you already asked for it. Now, did you see the picture? I sent you the picture of the, my pancake too. I don't think with so. the butter on it. it. Oh yeah, the butter was the same size as the pancake. It was a circle. You know how they have those circle butters? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one one piece of butter for one pancake. It was the same size as the pancake. It was the same size as the pancake. He just scooped it on there. It was. The, it looked like a pancake sandwich, dude. Pancake no wonder butter, you had to take a break. The butter was just as thick as the pancake too. It was sweet. Yeah, that, he, that was one of the best pancakes I ever had. He tried. He tried to go to the gym the next morning, and it was like he was in slow motion yeah. from all the butter. He's trying to walk, but dude, are you in slow motion? Yeah, it's the no, butter. He's just really sliding. He's down. just sliding off. Bl- I, I'm a big fan of butter. His, yeah, we know, Judy. I think it was Remember last butter year. Butter ice cream. Where was I at that? I had remember I sent you a picture of that too. No, that was with when, in Vegas. Oh, it was in Vegas. Yeah, we had butter ice cream. It was oh, butter flavored oh, ice cream. Oh yeah, I sent you another picture of something that like was butter, butter flavored too. Or butter? No, butter, butter ice cream, and it came and it looked like butter. It was like vanilla ice cream, uh, but like butter flavored. And it came. It looked like a stick of butter. It came out looking. It probably was just it a, on a plate. It's probably just butter. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't try it. I ate the whole thing. I mean, even if I tried, he would have slapped my hand right probably while I was eating it. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to get stat. We just had steak, so probably, he was probably eating it with a steak knife, just chopping it off one piece at a time. It's pretty weird. But, but other than that, I didn't have, I, I mean, I found a really good burger place. We'll have to bring you to next time in Vegas. I can't remember the name of it. No, Blondie's, I think it's called. They had a good burger. Like, you know how you just, like, I'm, at, I'm uh, sick of having steaks. I'm sick of having all that other stuff. It was in the little strip Flamingo. mall. No, it was in the little strip mall by, because I stayed in Planet Hollywood, and you're oh. in that little Miracle Mile or whatever they call oh, yeah, it. Strip yeah. mall. It was in that. So, but I stayed at Planet Hollywood. I liked it. That's first. I think that was my first time at Planet Hollywood. I'm not sure if I've been there before. I get confused because they all look the same. <laughs> they do. I and, agree. It, and you're there for f- four days, and it's not till the fourth day you actually figure out where the elevators are when you actually walk in a different <laughs> entrance. Yeah, I felt that. Like, I ran around so many times, like. When we were just at uh, Treasure Island. And not only did you have to pick the right room or the right section of elevator, you had to you had to pick the right elevator. Yeah, right. There was wrong elevators. And then if you went one step over, you you couldn't Different even levels. go even close. You'd press the button and you get an elevator, realize your floor wasn't there. <laughs> like, well, I'm in the wrong elevator, obviously. Yeah, and it's already going up. <laughs> you're already you're at floor twelve already. Yeah. I'm on even. What the 
Yeah. I have an odd number. <laughs> yeah. It literally was like odd even and yeah. then like one through 18 and then 18 through 36. Exactly. So there was only 25% of the elevators actually got you where you wanted to go. So you got to do it sometimes. Well, so, but they're also you only have to go back two times in yeah. the next two months. <laughs> yeah, Vegas also is it's a disaster during this time too. So not only is it one of their busiest times, but they're setting up for that. Form is it Formula One? What's there? Yeah, I F1. Think so. Are they doing F1? F1? Again? Yeah, so like know. they're setting up yeah. that. So like some of the sidewalks are closed. They're working all night. Like it's not a it's not the ideal time. Like either they need to move that race or Seaman needs to move. Which neither one of them want to move because it's two of the biggest events in Vegas. So. Yes. So you're just fighting it. Like, it's just, it's not convenient. It's crazy. You can't, I mean, you already can't get a cab, and now you can't get to certain places with the cab. So it's just like, and you can't it's walk. Hard. Did you take the uh, private jet down or no? No, it's a helicopter. Okay. Yeah. So my, That's actually, true. my flights went well this time. So I didn't, I only was, I was delayed on the way back and I was nervous. So, like, as I'm flying back, I'm looking outside. Like, so first they start delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. I'm like, oh no, this is not happening. I need to get home. Like, it's hunting season. And then they finally pull in. They unload everybody. As I'm watching out the window, like I see them take all the luggage and I see them bring the new luggage and the guys walk away from the luggage. I said, oh, that can't be good. And sure enough, the guy says, hey, the pilot says he'll let us know when he's ready to load. So I'm like, oh, great. Someone pooped on the floor or something in the <laughs> airplane. They're cleaning it up. Probably some little kid puked. So then they finally like, it was about 10 minutes after that. I saw the guys come back and start loading them. I'm like, yeah, we're going to leave. Um, but I sat. Um, both times. Okay, so I load early, right? Because I always get early board. I I loaded A twenty twenty five on the way back. So I'm the twenty fifth person on the plane. The person that was behind me in line sat next to me. What does this happen to me? Like they Every even said, time. there's empty seats. <laughs> Every time, dude. I sat. I actually sat Tyler. The the t- was it the the time before that when the lady sat in the center seat and there was the the aisle seat was still open. We were leaving. We were leaving. He was sitting at the window seat, and the lady was sitting in the middle seat, and there was nobody, nobody in the on the aisle. aisle seat? And we were leaving. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. she we, I ended up sitting to next you. to her. Literally, I sat next to some yeah. lady the whole way. That's so funny. And she talked to me the whole way too. Like I was interested. It's there crazy. should be something rule or something where they don't have like you should be able to say like some kind of hands. You okay. need like the like the uh, limousine, yeah. the little slider screen, you know. As she's talking, just rolling up your window. Yeah. Roll like, faster, please. Yeah. yeah. Just have a sign. Yeah. That's what I said. Do not disturb. I understand <laughs> that your life's English. interesting, or you think your life's it's interesting. Just, it's no, Spanish, I got to flip yeah. it again. <laughs> <laughs> or Spanish. <laughs> Turn it over to English. Turn French? Over to it's, Spanish. In French. <laughs> it's in French. <laughs> oh, maybe it's electronic. You go, ding, ding, ding. Oh, it's French. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, no. Dang it, I got it so wrong. So on the, on the way back, I sat next to, um, let's just say it was crowded. And the only way I can, the best way to describe it is they each had a pizza with them. <laughs> they weren't sharing one. They were both eating a pizza. So it was a little bit like, and I'm not a small guy. It was a little bit crowded, but I was nice and warm. <laughs> okay. I was in there. <laughs> but at that point, you didn't care. You just want to, uh, you've yeah, been gone for that many home. days. You just want to get home. Dorothy's right. And, There's no place like home. Yep. And I had the kids or Tater dropped off my car at the airport. And then I'm like. And here's another thing. This is your brother. So drop my car. I said, we made a plans. You drop the car off at the airport. Like that way, when I get back, I can just, uh, we only pay for one or two days parking. Yeah. I get in the car, has a full coffee in there. And then I have just about enough gas to get out of the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and the coffee wasn't for you either. The coffee wasn't for me either. Oh, I wonder where my coffee went. He's, he stopped and got coffee, didn't get gas, forgot his coffee in the car. <laughs> All of those check out. Yeah. Yeah. That's him right there, right? Yeah, that's funny. So, well, I'll end with this final story because this feels like a continuation of the story I told before. So, uh, we had rap classes last week at uh, Ray Hall Letterman Landing and Racing. They hosted us there. It was awesome. So, we were in the BMW side of their building. So, one of the things they asked me when we did the class was one, they were going to let us get the van in there. Then we had to bring in a rental car. He was like, hey, it would be great if you could bring in a BMW as the rental because that's what this side of the building is, right? They'll be like, Hey, we appreciate you guys using it. And whatever you do, don't bring in the one that's on the other side of the building. So like, yeah, we probably can pull that off. I mean, they usually have something, right? So I can't book it ahead of time, right? Because then I'm just going to get one of the two options. So I was like, here's my plan. When I leave, 
I'm just going to keep calling the rental car places until one of them has a BMW. And then I'll know like, hey, I'm going to be there in two hours and I'll pick it up. I call the first one. It's the closest one to the place. I was like, hey, do you guys have a BMW? I said, it doesn't matter what type. I was like, I'm doing an event with BMW. I need a BMW for this week. She's like, let me check the lot. She puts me on hold. I wait like three or four minutes. She comes back. She said, yep, we have a BMW 3 Series on the lot. You can have it today. I was like, perfect. Exactly what I need. How odd is that? That it worked out perfectly. I get to the place. There is two vehicles in the lot total. Neither one of them are BMWs. I walk inside. Maybe it's like sitting in the back. You know, maybe they're cleaning it. I don't know. Walk in. It's like, hey, I have a reservation. He's like, oh, we don't have your car. I was like, she literally just told me. She checked a lot and you had the car. He's like, we probably haven't had a BMW here in weeks. It's like, how's that work? So like, well, I'm not taking either of these cars. So I was like, I guess I'll cancel my reservation. Proceeded to not find a car at all. Not even a BMW. Five rental places in a row. Oh boy. Couldn't get a BMW was the first one. Then I literally just couldn't get a car. So we went around for like forever. Then we finally found one. It wasn't a BMW. But so big surprise. Shout out again, Enterprise for... Um, Again, well, I'm taking, surprised you didn't go to the BMW car taking lot. My reservation. Say, hey, I want to do a res- taking a reservation, saying you have the car. Yeah. So I, yeah. I ran the same. So I'm renting a car from Vegas to go out that way. And you know, you're pre rented, right? You walk in and you know, you, I pre register so I can walk right to the, the thing. Yep. I walk to the thing and he's like, ah, we don't have a lot of the cars cleaned. We'll go get someone cleaning them. Like maybe have some extra help. So basically, I had my choice of like a couple different cars, but one of them was. I end up with that Mustang convertible, but I look in the back because, you know, Judy's sister's going to go. And I'm like, look, like, man, there's not much room, but like, hey, screw it. It's Judy's sister. She can sit with her feet in her mouth. I don't care. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so no, we ended up with a, a super small car, but we only had to go an hour and a half one way and an hour and a half back. And, and then they used it for, they went yeah. shopping when, when I, w- I was working. They were shopping. They were, they shopping. were shopping. So, but yeah, so it's. We end up same thing where it's just what well, Rick said. We have bad shout outs. Now we have to give good shout outs. Bad shout outs to enterprise rentals for doing that skit that we watched in the car forever ago. You know how to take the reservation. You just yeah. don't know how to hold, hold the, the reservation. reservation. And that's kind of the most important part. Yeah. That's the same. It's I, mean, a, I still, that's, that's happened <laughs> I to me. use enterprise a lot. And I still probably always use them, but yeah, they've screwed me over a couple of, they haven't screwed me over. I always end up with a car. I have to pull it. But uh, you don't end up with like, okay, why even choose what I'm going to oh, rent if you're just going to change it when I get there? And this is Vegas. They have thousands of cars yeah, I don't there. Underst- I don't understand. What's the point of the reservation? I don't understand it. Yeah. Like you plan on getting the car there or yeah. it just you just kind of hope? Well, mine, I think they like, because it was an influx in SEMA and everybody. Right? Yeah. So like there was just oh. an influx of cars coming yeah, back. And I left the day after that. So probably all of them came back when they all flew out late Friday night and I was renting a car Saturday morning. Yeah, so I imagine so they, they probably did it all after hours, yeah. but they didn't plan on that many people doing it late. And yeah. So I, mean, I understand just, that kind of stuff, but like yeah. still. But I don't understand that. So you can't call the rental car place. Like you're not, you're not talking to anybody that's there. Cause yeah, I called the next four people and I asked them all the same, like, are, like, are you there? Like, no. can you verify the car is there? They're like, oh no. And I was like, this doesn't, do, so I, you can't call, like you can't call, you can't call that the actual place. Like you have to talk to a call center and yeah, they are just looking center. at the thing and saying, yep, it's there. But the lady to say, let me check the lot. What was she doing? She's lying. She's like, let me check the lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hold on. Listen. How long has it been on hold? Yeah, hold it's probably on. good enough time. <laughs> Go fish. There's uh, times oh, where like. Uh, yes, sir. There, yes, we do. <laughs> I mean, the, you can't say our customer service doesn't do this sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, full disclosure. Depends on the customer. Hey, please hold. Can you see? <laughs> can you guys verify that you have a roll of twenty-four by ten white oh. in stock? Oh no! Yeah, yeah. hold on. <laughs> yeah, we do. No, She's sitting in Grand Rapids. No, and it's, the other, it's the other way around. The customer service is doing their work. It's the guy in the back that's like, "Can oh, yeah. you guys check if you have it?" Yeah, give me a second. Yep. We just checked it's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With all respect, it's probably not customer service. Like, it's yeah. like it's looking, the warehouse guy. Looking at the shelf from like fifty yards away, be like. Yeah. Looks like it's there. That looks like a 50 yard. I think I see one back there. (laughs) It's in the right spot. Yeah, it's probably fine. It's fine. (laughs) Either way, we're going to come up with something that's white and 24 by 10. (laughs) We'll send you a 50 yarder or something. Yeah. Just have Domingo cut it down. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just start chopping them. All right. uh, Anyways. We got to wrap this up. I said I was going to give them a shout out because they keep tagging us on Instagram. So uh, it's a wrap underscore LLC. 
on Instagram. They're in Ohio. That's I'm just reading their Instagram profile. Big shout out. You guys have tagged us in like a hundred posts this month, I feel like. So thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. And if you want a shout out, just keep tagging us or send us your stuff on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Or send us a hat or yeah, or anything. Send us some of yeah. your, send us a sticker. Send We're us something. Really, we'll, we'll put we it right up here. Very cheap to give shout outs on the yep. podcast. So, so whatever you want to send us. So, anyways, shout out for tagging us. And on we Instagram. also need a shout it. out to G2G because that sign that's behind you tipped over, yes. fell loud enough to set the alarm off <laughs> and lived. It, oh, it does have a crack in the ass. Look. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't notice that. We broke it. Yeah, well, it fell, it fell we'll out of the window. One. Due to those guys had all those rolls stuck in here. One must have fell, hit the roll because I had it taped at the top. Yeah, that, I'm just lucky it didn't hit my cactus. There would have been problems then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have been. Yeah. Your cool. cactus looks good, though. It's kind of surprising. Anyways, I don't know how long we've been talking because you guys started this without me. So hopefully you they said. Let's go to the bathroom so we got to leave. Hopefully they said, welcome to episode 40. But yeah, we did. Not, we, we did. We did. We appreciate you guys listening. A couple times. Rick made, we made it to it twice. 40. Um, we said we would do another live at 50. Are we like committing to that actually? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Absolutely. With, with um, maybe some Woodford or something. Oh, yeah. We did talk about doing that. Should we say that for 52? 52 is a year. Yeah, we should do it. Judy wanted to be in on it, too. She said she'd drink some wine with us. Okay. 50, we'll do live stream. Same time. nine Because our live stream has to be at 9 a.m. I don't think I'm going to drink okay. bourbon at 9 o'clock in the morning. 52. Wine. What? What's wrong with... How are you going to drink all day if you don't start at 9? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeez. On a Monday? When are these youngsters going to learn? I know. That, On a I Monday. Out. What is wrong Even with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long weekend, dude. <laughs> we have to request this half day off, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you at noon. Uh, all right. We got to wrap this up. We got to right, get going. I got work to all do. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed this one, even though we didn't really cover anything. So if you're still listening, we appreciate you. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye.